Chris, did you murder these three people? No, sir. I did not. Did you have someone else kill them? No. Are you behind the charges? No. I think the evidence and the expert testimony has shown that. Well, the prosecutors are suggesting that you are. You understand that? Yes, sir. I've been in jail for 768 days and five and a half hours. This morning, we're shining our spotlight on the conviction of Kit Martin. He's the formal commercial, former rather commercial airline pilot and military serviceman who's accused of killing three of his neighbors, allegedly because his neighbor was about to testify in his military court martial. He's found guilty back in 2021, but has always maintained his innocence. Speaking with our Julia Janae after the case to relay his shock at the guilty verdicts. What was going through your mind when you heard that verdict read of guilty on all counts? Uh, everybody was telling us, you know, this, you got this in the bag. Uh, you'll be out of here. Um, you know, it's, it's obvious you're going to win this, even though that case is pretty rare, actually. But everybody was saying that. Even the, the deputies and stuff that were, you know, responsible for moving me back and forth to jail and stuff like that. So when that verdict was read, it was just, it was like it wasn't real. It was just hard to, you know, fathom. But last week, the Supreme Court of Kentucky upheld Martin's convictions, leaving him behind bars to continue serving time for those three life sentences. Joining me now, a very special guest, Kit Martin's ex-wife, Stacy Stone, who also believes he's innocent. Uh, Stacy, good morning to you. Thank you so much for coming on Opening Statements. Uh, share with us, if you would, please, your reaction to what the Kentucky Supreme Court decided in upholding your ex-husband's convictions? Well, to be perfectly honest with you, I, um, I don't think we were quite as surprised by the Supreme Court's reactions as we were the travesty of the trial itself. Um, I would like to mention that two of the Supreme Justices, I don't know if this has been out there, but two of the Justices did not agree with that opinion. Um, so we did feel a little ray of hope in that. Uh, but now, um, if you don't mind me interjecting this, we now have tremendous information post-conviction that improper format will exonerate Kit Martin. And in fact, we believe that it should support indictment of public officials and other persons because Kit Martin is innocent. Wow. Okay, you have to tell us more. That's a big, big bombshell, Stacy. Uh, what is this new evidence that has been uncovered? I'm not at liberty. I'm sorry. I'm not at liberty to give that information because I can't put his case at jeopardy. But I can tell you it is there. And I think that it's, you know, the travesty of the trial itself. It was such a shocker because we're in... Um, a courtroom where we're observing absolutely no evidence, none. I mean, there was there was nothing that pointed to him. And I am so appreciative of Court TV that they aired this trial. But for those viewers that watched that, which I know that there were many because we have thousands of supporters, uh, but when they watched that trial, if you listen to the closing arguments, what happened in that trial did not support those closing arguments whatsoever. Mm -hmm. uh, but we have an army called Kit's Army, and actually there's thousands of people all over the United States and actually global that completely believe in his innocence. And there's um, Facebook groups, there's uh, Freedom's Cry, Kit Martin's Story, uh, there's the, um, we have a podcast called Free Kit Martin, Free, yeah, Free Kit Martin. And then we have Emilio Corsetti has written a book, which when he started his book, he didn't have a, uh, he didn't say he's innocent or he's guilty. He wanted to investigate himself. And when he mm -hmm. finished his book, he was 100% agreeable that Kit Martin is innocent. 
and wow. that book will come out in the spring of 2024. I'll tell you what has bothered me, Stacy, about the trial, um, because as you know at Court TV, we don't have a horse in the race. Uh, so we call, I like to say I call balls and strikes when I sit and give uh, kind of like the color commentary and the play-by-play -play commentary, just like in a ball game with the trials. And we explain things that are happening that pertain to evidentiary matters. Uh, we assess witnesses, their credibility, believability. The brass was what I couldn't get past. So. To take everybody back, the facts were that investigators processed that porch and found nothing. Several detectives all over the porch found not a single thing. Uh, your husband's a military man. I would imagine that he probably does a lot of shooting in his backyard. If I remember correctly, there was a lot of testimony, you know, and, and if you just leave your brass laying out there, it's going to get, you know, uh, uh, worn and tarnished, all that. So if that spent cartridge casing was on that porch for all that time in the weather, it would get tarnished. This was a shiny new spent casing that was uncovered, you know, by somebody connected to one of the victims. And correct me if I'm wrong, but wasn't it placed in the hands of somebody who serves in government? Um, I can speak to what you first said, and I'm not a ballistics person. I'm not an attorney, so I, I don't want to speak out of turn. Uh, but yes, to answer one question, Kit uh, often shot behind his house and also there was a range behind the victim's house which they had fired weapons before. As you mentioned, it was shiny and if the story was the way that they told it, the shell casing had been out for what, five months? Right. And like you said, it was shiny. Um, and I think there's some other things that will come out from that. But again, I can't address that at this at this moment. Sure. I can tell you that maybe what you don't know is that an American hero who fought 30 years for your freedom, my freedom, all these people's freedom is sitting behind bars and, and he's an innocent man. They knew, absolutely knew that they didn't have a case, had nothing on him because there was nothing to have. They offered him five to 13 year plea bargain. And because of his integrity, he said, no, I didn't do this. I'm innocent and he is innocent. Wow, that's interesting to note that they offered him a plea agreement that he rejected because at that time and still he's consistently maintained his innocence. I wanna to talk to you about Joan Harmon. Uh, this is, an ex of his who was largely uh, portrayed uh, by your ex-husband's, you know, counsel is somewhat of a villain, but we know we didn't see her or her son. And so there, there was this cloud of suspicion and mystery with them. But we did get to hear from your daughter when she gave some testimony in the trial. I want to play that clip now. Were you there the night that your father and Joan separated? I was. Can you tell the jury about that night? He stated that he wanted a divorce from her at that time. Right. And what did you hear Joan say in response? Um, so you say you're on same grounds, Judge. Just uh, over, go ahead, you may ask that question specifically. She said, if you leave me, I'm sorry. She said, if you leave me, I will ruin your life. I'll ruin your military career. I know how to do it. I'll tell them that you abused me. Wow. Okay, so Stacy, you've told us that there's some brand new evidence that was uncovered that you're not at liberty to speak about. Uh, you've said that it could lead to the indictment of a public official or public officials. It's that bad. Um, Joan Harmon is who many people suspected as being involved in a setup here of, of your ex. Can you tell us, does this new evidence pertain to her? Boy, I have to be careful. Um, again, I can't, you know, our thing is we don't have to prove who did it. Right. Apparently, we've had to show that he's innocent. But as far as Joan Harmon, um, I don't have positive things to say. Uh, she absolutely pled the fifth. Uh, she was not made to come into the courtroom to plead the fifth, so the jury never knew that. Her son also pleaded the fifth. They never knew that. This woman, she is absolutely, you know, the, the small 
tidbit of stories that you heard about Joan Harmon, that won't even cover it. You cannot imagine the evil that this woman has done and is capable of. So to answer your question, I cannot say that it will. No, I do not believe it will take her out of play. I, I can okay. tell you that. I, okay. I, I, I do not think that it will take suspicion off of her. No. Okay, fair enough. Um, tell me, Stacey, before we have to let you go, have you spoken to Kit? We um, either email or talk every day. Oh, wow. Um, and he is, yeah, he is, um, he's got such a support group that we're all behind him. There's an army of people behind him. And, you know, I would like to just say for him, he is a man of character and integrity. And what he is doing to get by, he is teaching prisoners and, and helping them get their GED. He's uh, studying the Bible, teaching Bible classes and preaching. And, you know, I know he just wants to be free, but he's still in the very prison in the walls that he's in after fighting for all of our freedom for 30 years. He is still even in prison trying to help people. And we have done a, such an injustice to allow an innocent man to be locked up. But he, he didn't do this. Stacy, I know that you're no longer married to him, but you still love him, don't you? Of course I do. He's the father of my children. We've always been friends, you know, and we will be, you know. Just because we divorce does not mean we can't be friends. We are still family, and, and we always will be. Just because we're not meant to be married does not mean we can't be friends, and because we're divorced does not make him a murderer. So he's a very good person. Oh, well, we appreciate you sharing all of that sentiment with us. Uh, Stacy. when you are at liberty to share more, will you please come back on opening statements? Our audience wants to hear it. I get asked all the time, uh, all the time. I would say maybe a couple weeks go by and somebody will say, what's going on with Kit Martin's case? I believe he's innocent. There's a lot of interest uh, from our court TV uh, courties. And so mm -hmm. please uh, share with us that news when you can. I absolutely will shout it from the rooftop. Yes, ma'am. Very good. Well, every good wish uh, to you, Stacy, and to your family. Take good care and thank you again. Thank you so much.